Welcome to Seattle College's International Programs and our show, Conversations With, where we talk to people that help you understand how you, too, can be an international student in the United States and why Seattle Colleges should be your first choice. We'll talk to students and staff and agents and government folks, all kinds of people about what you can expect when you're getting ready to apply or travel here, what you'll experience while you're with us, and how it can all lead to an amazing life. Don't forget to check out the Seattle College's International Programs website at intl.seattlecolleges.edu where you can find a treasure trove of information about the school, the programs here, and best of all, fill out and submit your application. Again, that's intl.seattlecolleges.edu. Hey, everybody, welcome back to Conversations with here at our Seattle Central Campus in Seattle, Washington. Want to welcome Jillian to the show. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jillian, why don't you tell our listeners where you're from, what you're doing here, and what your plans may be for the short term are. Sure. I'm from Colombia. I'm 25 years old, and I'm doing a major in world languages here in Seattle College. So to get a world languages degree, does that mean you have to take a certain number of languages or what does that mean? Yes, you can pick out the language that you would like to learn the most hmm. in order to transfer in, get a bachelor, bachelor's degree to become a translator or an interpreter or just to become a, maybe a professor oh. if you want to teach. Is that kind of your goal to teach down the road? Mm, no, I want to be an interpreter. Oh, okay. Translate. I would like to help, you know, my community, Latin community, to break the communication barriers right. that we may have. Have you already done some of that kind of work? Not paid. Not paid. <laughs> volunteer. <laughs> volunteer, yeah. It's, it's specifically with my mom. My mom doesn't speak English. Oh. So whenever she wants to talk, for example, with my husband, she asks me, of course, to translate or to interpret right and it's the same from my husband to my mom so Mm -hmm. yeah that's the kind of thing I've done and I also had the chance to do a course in medical interpretation or medical interpreting so there is where everything started Mm -hmm. I did that and then I said like okay I want to move on I want a college degree okay so you're doing world languages so which language did you choose yep so I already know Spanish of course, yeah. So the goal is to learn ASL, ah. sign language, yes. So I'm starting with those classes. And um, the idea is to learn the most I can. Mm-hmm. But I'm also taking an extra course, and it's Portuguese. <laughs> Which should <laughs> but, be pretty easy for you, I'm thinking. Yeah, a little bit. Uh-huh. But that's like an extra class. It's out of college. But, you know, I'm trying to learn the most I can. Sure. So ASL, that's pretty exciting. But A in ASL stands for American Sign Language. Yeah. Do you already do Spanish Sign Language? No. No, you don't. No, I don't. And it's interesting because it is different in every single country. Mm-hmm. So um, I may learn uh, sign language from Colombia, but if I try to interpret sign language from someone from Mexico mm-hmm. into oh. ASL or uh, just English, it will be different. Right, right. Wow, that seems like that would be really challenging. So you're starting ASL and you want to be able to work with the deaf community. Have you, do you have anyone in your family that's deaf? Not really. No? Just no. interested in that? World. Yeah, just interested. And in, I had the first uh, class, uh, ASL 120 I think mm-hmm. and it was interesting how the instructor was telling us how there is ASL for even blind people that's so true you, you start to think about how can someone be deaf and also blind and I know. still communicate it's it's very interesting it's super interesting um, so I don't know if I told you this already, but my wife is an ASL teacher. She teaches Mm -hmm. ASL at uh, one of the local high schools. And she did interpretation, what you're studying to do for years and years and years. 
So you should really meet my wife one of these days. That would be wow. cool. Yeah, yeah. She's really great. I love to. And at our wedding, she signed a song. Uh, it was really cool. Wow. Um, so yeah, it's. Re- I'm really excited for you. That's a field of study that I have a, a little bit of experience with now. It's cool. That's awesome. So, um, so you're taking ASL. You speak Spanish. In uh, what are you going to be able to, like? So you have. Oh, so let me go back a little bit. So you came from Colombia to the United States. Is your husband from Colombia or is he from the United States? No, he's from here. Oh, he's from the United States. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So you came here. Are you here on an F one visa then? I am, but I came initially with a different visa. Ah, okay. Yeah, there is another background there. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Did you come to be an au pair? Yes. Okay, yeah, I that's pretty that common. It is common, yeah. Yeah, and how was that experience for you? Mm, it was good, sometimes bad. Oh. But... Because of the kids, because of the family? Yeah, kind of, but you always get to learn things from those experiences. For that's sure. what makes you better right 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 Mm -hmm. did the kids speak spanish no no they didn't did you teach them spanish a little bit yeah so you um so you came as an au pair so when that visa expired did you have to return to colombia in order to apply for an f1 or were you able to stay in the u.s and just get it switched i stayed in the u.s Mm -hmm. and waited until it got approved wow that's great and was that a difficult process a little bit because I wasn't allowed to work. Of course. And the only thing I could do was the medical interpreting course, which was great because I had a chance to learn something. Right. While I was waiting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Does your husband do ASL? Does he? No. No, not at all? Okay. No. <laughs> well, that's really great that you did that. Um, and then you were able to stay. And then is your long-term plan to work in the field here in the state of Washington? Or do you want to do that kind of work somewhere else? I love Washington State. I have to say it. I like the rain. I like the cold weather, so I don't care about it. (laughs) um, The purpose is to to move to another state, probably Ohio. I know. Oh. So uh, it is basically because there are more um, hospitals. There are a lot of hospitals, medical field that I could take advantage Mm -hmm. on. So... I will probably go there. But if I have the chance to stay here and work here, I will absolutely do it. So you like the rain? You like? Have you been out and about? I mean, you've been here a while, so have you hiked in the mountains? Yep. Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Uh, where have you gone? I've been to Whidbey Island. Oh, very nice. It's beautiful. Uh, I, I forget the numbers right now. Mm-hmm. The names, sorry, sure. of the places. But I've been to... The um, I took to go where everyone goes to ski. I forgot the name. Oh, like up on the pass, like Snoqualmie Pass. In the east. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Have you tried skiing? I tried, but it didn't work very well. You know? <laughs> yeah. Actually, my husband was telling me, "Hey, let's go there. I will teach you. Don't worry about anything." Yep. So he was like, "Okay, do this, do that." It was like maybe ten, fifteen minutes teaching me, giving, mm-hmm. the, giving me the introduction of hiking and then he said okay let's go there and apparently it was the mountain for beginners but it didn't look like beginners for me it was pretty steep yeah and i fell I of fell course and, yeah i got a concussion and everything it a was concussion nice. yeah why you fell hard i fell hard yeah i was like this <laughs> looking into the sky <laughs> old snow was just falling <laughs> And um, he was worried. He was like, oh, my God, I killed her. <laughs> you know, I brought it here, and now she's, she's, now she's she dead. has an injured. Uh-huh. But, well, I'm fine, I guess. Good. That's I, good. Yeah, I went to the doctor, and he said everything was just fine. Everything's fine. Well, that's good. So if you go, if you come here and you want to try skiing, be careful out there. Did you yeah. wear a helmet? I did. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. the main thing. You know, mm-hmm. like, you don't. I wouldn't be here. That, so was that the first time you'd seen snow before? Because I'm guessing not a lot of snow in Colombia. Mm, well, I saw the snow by the first time on 2021. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's been. I was very excited. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
But there are mountains in Colombia. There's some big mountains in Colombia, yeah. right? The Andes come right up into the... Mm-hmm. So you do... There are parts of Colombia where there's snow you can go to. Yeah, but I've never been to those. Been. Yeah, I was busy working. You were busy working. <laughs> I, I don't have time to go up there. No. So you um, did you do any university work when you were in Colombia? Or did you just come here directly to do university work after you were done with your work, your au pair work? I actually did. As soon as I finished school, um, high school, I I started a software development program oh, at really? a university in Colombia. But mm-hmm. I didn't like it. No, oh, no. Because it was all about math, and all my classmates were men. Oh, you so were... I felt intimidated a little bit. Uh huh. I was like, oh wow, what hmm. am I doing here? But mm-hmm. it was like a deal I did with my mom. She said like. As soon as I finished the school, this is what happened with most of the people in Colombia. And it's that uh, you are not sure if you're going to the university if you don't have a scholarship or you have money or, yes, like, you don't have someone to say, like, okay, we'll give you all the money you need to go to university or you have to get a loan in order to pay. Mm. So my mom said, I will pay your university, your tuition, but you will have to study this. Oh. So I had to do it. I was like, okay, I want to study something. So I tried. It was three semesters. Mm -hmm. The first two were pretty well. And um, I even got a half scholarship. Oh, that's great. But then I started seeing the most difficult subjects, (laughs) physics, Mm -hmm. um, some algebra, like advanced algebra. I don't know what the exact name of those are. Mm-hmm. But I didn't like it, so I, I, I decided not to do it anymore and study English. I oh, so you switched English. your major? I couldn't oh. because they didn't teach English at all in that university. So I had to find my, my path, my own path. I had to find an institute who teach English, who teaches English. And that's how I did it. Well, your English is quite good. So did you speak any English before you went to that institute? Or is that where you learned it all? Ah, a little bit. Mm-hmm. School, it was a bilingual school. So all right. we had some, um, how do you say, like some impact from the American culture okay. or the United States culture mm-hmm. in our school. So that's how I got a little bit. Hmm. But it improved thanks to that curse. Right, right. Um, so you're from the big city, right? You're from Cali? Yeah, I'm from Cali. Yeah, cool. Ooh, Cali. <laughs> Go Cali, yeah. Um, I'm going to be visiting um, the coffee region uh, before too long, in a, in a month or two, a couple months. I'll be going to um, Armenia, Pereira, Manizales. Have you been to those cities? Uh, I've been to... Pereira, but mm-hmm. on a gas station only. Only stopping <laughs> at the gas station. Yes, it was a road trip uh-huh. from Cali to Bogota. I don't know much. I love my country, but I have to say that I didn't have the chance to visit many places. I would have liked to gotcha. do it, but uh, sometimes you don't have that opportunity. Sure, sure. So you have just to just keep moving. <laughs> I know Cali, I know Bogota, I know some areas around Bogota, some mm-hmm. areas around Cali, Yeah, and that's it. Right. It, well, I've I've only been there once. I've only been to Bogota for a day, um, so I'm really excited to go and spend a little extra time yeah. there. That's cool. So when you got here, um, culture shock? Did you find that it was just way different than you were expecting, or were there aspects of American culture you were just like, wow, this is so weird? Mm-hmm. Yeah, from the airport. Just especially. from the airport. Yeah, because it was my first time taking a flight. Oh, ever on a plane? Ever, and it was international. You know, it's not the same if you go. I don't know from here to San Francisco. Yeah. So, um, (laughs) you know, you are trying to like look normal. Right. I was traveling all by myself, so it's like okay, if I get lost, I have myself. That's it. To find myself. Mm -hmm. So, it was just like I I I landed. Um, it was Dallas. I think it was Dallas. Oh, you went to Dallas. And then I went Seattle. to Dallas. Mm-hmm. It was huge. It's a big airport. I mean, I, I I wasn't. I didn't have the chance to be on any other airport different than 
the Bogotá's airport. Mm -hmm. And then I see this huge airport and it has trains inside the airport. To so, get from one place to another. Yeah, you know, it was kind of, I didn't know all those things could be in a, at the airport. So I got lost. Oh, I no. almost lost my, my flight the, to come here. You missed it or you almost, almost did? Almost. I almost did. I almost wow. did. And um, yes, I had to ask someone at the airport, like, hey, I'm looking for this gate, but I don't see it anywhere. Can mm -hmm. you help me? Mm -hmm. He was like, hmm, yeah, sure. You have to take the train. Oh, my God. And he said, bye. He left me alone. I was <laughs> like, I have to take a train? Yeah. Did he understand that I have to go in the city? I don't have to go in the city. I only need to go get the airplane. So I didn't believe him. Sure. I was just like, okay, I will just ask someone else. And then I asked that person and he took me on those little cards they have in order to yeah, meet yeah, people yeah. around the airport. I felt like uh, an old lady, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because they only take <laughs> old people or people with some disability sure, so they sure. can help them to get into their gates. Mm -hmm. But I was just there sitting in the car and he told me like okay you just wait here there's gonna come a train and that train is gonna take you to your to your gate mm -hmm. and that was it i was like so impressed like, wow this is the first world you know wow. they have trains in the airports <laughs> <laughs> not only <Yes>. planes <laughs> that's great so you made it to your flight you got here okay and then when you first got here were you pick, you must have been picked up by your host family then mm -hmm. and yeah got settled in were you able to find vacation time or did you just work like every day i worked every day there were a couple times off because they were living they had the vacations it was kind of vacation for me oh that's nice even yeah. though i was staying home mm -hmm. taking care of the house of course <laughs> but yeah it was a time off that i enjoyed cool well then you then you get to seattle colleges now you're in seattle there are a number of schools in the area why did you pick seattle colleges mm. Well, I have to say it was the first one in responding to oh. my application. Oh, that's great. And I liked the, um, the majors they offered. So that mm -hmm. was kind of the main thing. Right, right. After you're done here, after you've finished your two years, you're, you're going to transfer to another school. Do you know where you're going to go? Well, I'm still thinking about it. I'm still thinking about mm -hmm. it because, as I mentioned before, I already did the medical interpreting course, and I got certified on that. Like, they make you uh, evaluations about your understandings about the medical field and stuff like that. Right. So I went okay. However, I still have to get another, like, a national certification. Um, not in order to work, but to have more credibility at the moment of finding a job mm -hmm. in that field. So um, my plan is to finish this major. I would probably do a course, or I'm sorry, it's like a career training, mm -hmm. I think, in order to start working. Right. I, I feel like mm, I really want to, to, to apply what I've learned like sure. really soon. So if I do that, I might not need to go to the to transfer or yes to go to the university mm -hmm. but if I do I will have to still work I mean I, w I really want to start working on sure. that so so yeah. I'm getting a little confused for myself uh like so when you talk about doing the interpretation are you talking about doing Spanish English or are you talking about doing ASL mm. English uh, Spanish English. Okay, Spanish initially. English. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I'm studying in order to have like that second option besides mm. Spanish that would right. be ASL and also Portuguese. So I'm I'm working on those. Okay. In here. Gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, cool. Um, so do you have to take Spanish classes as well that are just specialized other than medical? I mean, are mm. there other areas? I'm not taking Spanish. Not at all. Honestly, okay. mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I thought about it like, hey, should I take Spanish? But I talked to the advisor and she said like, it's completely fine if you pick another language because you're already, you are already proficient in, in Spanish. Sure. So if they try to like test me, do you speak Spanish? <laughs> yes. <Si. laughs> I do. Si. <laughs> mm. Wow, that's great. Well, what does your husband do? What's his job? Uh, he's a Navy sailor. Oh, uh, like an Everett? Uh, Everett. Oh, uh, so there are some naval bases 
around oh, the Seattle yeah. area. Yeah, he's in Kitsap. Kitsap. Yeah. So that would be Bangor. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So uh so you are a navy wife. Yeah, I'm a wife. Wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I was at once upon a time, I was an army husband. My wife at the time, we're no longer married, but my wife at the time was in the army. Mm-hmm. So I was a spouse, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It's a it's a subculture of people that, It is, right? Right. Yeah. And you get some groceries cheaper. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that's very true. Yeah. That's what I enjoy the most. Right? Yeah, you go to the... Well, I don't know what you guys call it, but uh, we call it the PX in the art. What do you guys call it? I the, call it commissary. Oh, the commissary. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, cool. Very good. Um, so you uh, have to do how much more before you're able to graduate? How much more of your degree? It's so like one quarter, two quarters, three quarters? Well, before my degree... Yeah, normally, if you do two years, you get a, you end up with an associate's degree. Mm-hmm. Um, so you arrived in which quarter? Uh, summer. So I guess maybe not next summer, but the summer after that, like summer of 25 or maybe the spring of 25. Is that when you think you would graduate then? Or have you plotted it out? Do you... Let me ask you this. Have you worked with an advisor to see your whole education plan? No, that's something uh, we were talking about with the advisor a couple days ago in order to start to do that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because, yeah, it's important to know where you're going, right? Right, I agree. Yeah, I'm doing that. As I was telling you, we were talking about the career training, Mm -hmm. which is also a very good opportunity for me to start working on those things that I need in order to start just working right right so uh we're i mean i told her that i will finish this quarter because i have a lot of subjects that are kind of difficult so after that i will decide if i switch to that career training which will be in the um, social and health services oh, okay which relates a little bit to the medical interpreting world mm-hmm. because i already have the the Spanish language, mm-hmm. so you can just jump over that and start working. Or I could stay in this one, keep going with the ASL classes, maybe learning something else, mm-hmm. and then seeing the option of a transfer. Right on. Yeah, I'm thinking about those. That sounds like a pretty good deal. So you need to meet with an advisor again? You've met with one once? I've met with her a couple times. Couple of times. I ask everything all the time, so yeah, I've <laughs> met more than a couple times. Sure. Yeah. Well, I don't usually ask my guests this question, so can you tell me, in your first meeting with your advisor, what does the advisor do? Like, what does the advisor talk to you about? Is it just kind of a conversation, or do they have something very specific they're trying to get from you? How do they help you? So I initially have a list of questions about maybe platform or classes. Okay. Um, I start with that, essentially. Mm-hmm. Once all of those dubs are clarified, mm-hmm. I, I moved on. I'm like, okay, she might have some extra time. And I just ask a lot of questions. For example, the career training process. Um, I also like to... I mean, one thing that I really like is that they always seem to be pretty um, concerned or somehow interesting, interested mm-hmm. in your in your process on how you're doing, on your progress, um, especially if you are just starting. Right. So, and, and she always uh, advises you. I mean, she's an advisor, but she always advises you um, to do extra, like to find the find yourself. Um, investigating more about college and about the things you can do. So it's it's really helpful. Mm-hmm. I really don't know what I would be without advisors. Right. They're very helpful. They're super helpful. I, um, one of the things I know our advisors try to do is help you help yourself. They help you to become your own best advocate for your education. So um, some students arrive here and they don't really know how to do that for themselves. 
So not only do the advisors kind of help steer you to the classes you need and that kind of thing, but they also help you just kind of understand how to plot your own course for yourself rather than needing a lot of other people to kind of point the way for you. So that's kind of cool, I think. Yeah. So um, your advisor is the same person every time? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's something I really appreciate too. Yeah. Because you get to like find a conversation with that mm. person instead of just saying like, okay, I have a problem with this. Help me fix it or solve it. Right. Because that, that's the kind of thing that happens in other places. Like, yes, you have an advisor, go ask her whatever, but you ask one question and the person is like, mm, okay, you have to do this, bye. And that's not what you want, especially if you're an international student who find himself or herself completely lost sometimes. Sometimes, right? Mostly, yeah. Uh-huh. So when you, for the very first quarter, which would have been your summer, mm-hmm. um, Getting registered for classes can be confusing, even for domestic students. Mm-hmm. How did that go for you? And if it was difficult, how did you get it figured out? Uh, I think it was smooth. Oh. Yeah, because uh, the whole department, the IP department, they somehow make sure that you're having all the information you need in order to start your class and to get the registration. And it's all about reading well your emails i agree read your emails <laughs> read your emails I, I learned something it was back home i was working for for a company mm. that had like a outsourcing with google so i was working for google but not with google kind of thing mm-hmm. so uh the trainer something that i really l- loved learning l- loved learning from him was that you always have to learn. I mean, you always have to read. You yes. always have to read every single thing you have in front of you mm-hmm. on a laptop or whatever. You read it. If you read the whole thing that is on your email, mm-hmm. you will understand everything. There might some. There might be some things that you don't understand, but you, you have to make sure you read everything before you ask questions yeah. about I agree. things. I don't know. Mm-hmm. That's something I really, I really appreciate from him. That's a really good life lesson. So if you're out there and you're a new student, you're thinking of coming, whether it's to Seattle College or any university across the nation, yeah, we communicate via email. I know it's a little antiquated. A lot of students are on WhatsApp or whatever now, but email is still very reliable. So we send out important information like when you get your I-20 and we tell you what to do next for your visa and blah, blah, blah. Read those emails. So yes. that's good advice. For sure. Oh, do you hear that? That means it's trivia time. <laughs> this is where we ask five questions. So we got to see how savvy you are about this area and about this school. It's just for fun. If you get them all right, you're on our wall of fame. And if not, it's okay. Don't okay. worry about it. We won't make fun of you. <laughs> okay. All right. Question number one. You mentioned Google and Google is a tech company. Seattle is known for its tech companies. Can you name one other company within Seattle that is a tech company? Amazon. Amazon! (laughs) Nice. Now, question number two. You come from a coffee region in Colombia. We have three major coffee companies within the city of Seattle. Can you name one of those coffee companies? Starbucks. Starbucks, of course. (laughs) Bonus question. Can you name one of the other ones? They're a little more obscure. A ver. Mm. Okay, one is called Seattle's Best Coffee. And uh, I know that it's available in Europe. I've seen Seattle's Best in Europe. Mm. So it's a little international. And then uh, the other one is Tully's, I think. It's a little smaller, but it's also a pretty big company. I don't drink coffee. No coffee (laughs) drinking here. That's okay. Good, Good job on the question. All right, question number three. How many credits do you need to be taking in order to be considered a full-time student as an international student? Um, In total? Yeah. Well, according to my major, it says it is 90 to 95, but... No, I mean, uh, during the quarter. Oh, during the quarter, Mm -hmm. 12? Yeah, good. Nice job. (laughs) Doing great. Okay, question number four. 
Here at Seattle Central, we have a facility where you can go and exercise, lift weights, go running. What is the name of that facility? It has the name of a person. Yes. That's all I know because I've That's never been good. there. That's pretty good. It's right across the street. It's called the MAC, the, the Mitchell Mac. Activity Center. But you're right. It does have a name. Yeah. The Mitchell Activity. Oh, you've never been in there. I've never been there. You should check it out. It's part of you. I mean, when you pay tuition, that's part of your tuition. So yeah. it's a really, it's a nice facility because, uh, as you mentioned, it does rain occasionally here in Seattle. Mm -hmm. So there's an indoor track. Is so it? You, yeah, it's really cool. It's a, it's a short track. So I think you have to go like 13 times around in order to get a mile in. Mm -hmm. But it's still not, I go up there and run pretty regularly. I, I've never had anybody else running at the same time as me. It's Really? Yeah, it's pretty quiet. Huh. Uh, downstairs, the weight room gets used quite a bit, and there are some, there's like a racquetball court, squash court, uh, ping pong tables. I mean, there's a lot of other stuff where I see people, but not as many people run as I do, I guess. Yeah. Well, doing pretty well. Last question. What movie was the last one you saw in a theater? The last movie I saw. Yeah, like you, maybe you and your husband or you by yourself went out to see a movie. Oh, I saw The Shift. The Shift? Yeah, it's an independent, from an independent studio. I don't, I've never even heard of this movie. Yeah, I think no one did. <laughs> <laughs> How was it? Uh, it was very good. I oh, really it like it because it, it has some, it is related or it takes a lot of information from a book from the Bible, which is pretty interesting because it, they, they turn it into something kind of sci-fi, but they didn't exaggerate it that much. And it's called The Shift. The Shift, yeah. S-H-I-F-T. Mm -hmm. It's from Angel Studios. So um, I like it because it's not that uh, normal movie that they do these days about... Mm -hmm. Uh, sci-fi and there is a villain and, and there's a superhero and things like that and they they don't try to be too fake about things but more let's call it organic they go they they make you feel like the movie is telling you to to keep working to work hard in your life to not let things go down just because things are not working very well for you so it has a nice message. Mm -hmm. I cried. I actually went to watch that movie twice. Oh. Yes. It was a nice movie. I, I cried twice. Yes. And um, <laughs> it's I'll very it emotional. It, it, mm -hmm. It's weird. It's a weird movie because you start watching it and you don't expect it to be like it is. Hmm. So it's very, very interesting. And that's a film made in America or is it from yeah. another country? Well, there you go, guys. Check it out. The Shift. Maybe it's available. When did you see that? Uh, it was in December, so it might still... Might still be out there. Or, yeah. or maybe it's streaming, but you guys can Probably. find it somewhere. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, great job. I'm going to put you in the Hall of Fame there because uh, you pretty much got all the questions. <laughs> Mitchell Activity Center, that was pretty... Yeah. yeah it's good job. Okay, well, great. Let's wrap it up by... Um, I was asked... One of the last questions I always ask is, you know, if you were to give advice to some of your fellow countrymen or people in the region, kids that are thinking about maybe coming to the United States to study or, you know, maybe come into Seattle colleges, what advice would you give them? Um, it's important to know that things are going to be different from your country. You might have been in a university already, but it's not the same. Mm -hmm. The culture is different. People are different. Um, it is also very important to know how to manage your own time. You That's might want sure. to, like, you have this experience of coming to a new country and you just want to hang out, go to bars, and just being happy mm -hmm. with other people, have fun. But it's very important to um, have priorities. You know that you have to uh, get good scores and everything. So you put that first, and then you'll have plenty of time to do the other things. And find good friendships. Mm, Make yeah. good friendships. Not everyone who, smile at, who smiles at you, it's your friend. Mm -hmm. So, and, and even coming to a new country is harder because you might believe that everyone here is nice mm -hmm. just because everyone smiles at you. <laughs> or, or they say, oh, you have very nice hair, but 
you don't know how people are. You don't know what people do when they are not around others. Mm -hmm. So be careful, like choosing your friends. Sure, that's, that's very important. And another thing is that uh, never lose communication with your family back mm, home. That's never, really good advice. Don't forget your roots. Like you are coming here to learn. Right. Uh, to get involved with a new culture and everything, but it doesn't mean you have to forget who you are. Right. Um, You're the first student who said that, actually. I think that's good advice. My mom, well, I, I was an exchange student to Belgium for a while, and she was like, you better write, you better call, or she would be <laughs> very angry. Yeah, for sure. It's important not to forget where you come from. Yep. Like, I, I like the United States. I, I love Washington State. I love having the opportunity to study here. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I'm better than others in Colombia just for coming here and having this education. Sure. I actually feel that if I have this chance, it is to, at some point in my life, go back to Colombia and add something to the education of my people. Cool. And also, like, um, don't feel afraid of, for example, uh, some people may have some strong accents because you come from another culture, you speak a different language. <laughs> right. You speak with your own rules mm -hmm. in English. Uh, don't feel afraid of speaking. Like, it, it's completely normal. Some people will make you feel bad about it. Like, I don't understand what you say. Can you repeat, please? <laughs> well, sure. I don't know how you would hear that. Your English is great. So, <laughs> super easy to understand. It happens. It happens. So, it's, it's important for you to understand that no matter what, you still, you're still smart, you're still intelligent, uh, even with an accent. So Absolutely. It is, it is part of your growing, and um, just keep it up. And um, for my Colombian people specifically... Um, well, wait a minute. So one of the things we also ask is that you do something in Spanish so that people can hear the language, but also maybe be, maybe what you're going to tell your friends back in Colombia, maybe you do that in Spanish. Bueno. <laughs> mi gente colombiana, mi gente bella. <laughs> um, si están pensando en venir aquí, es muy importante, como decía anteriormente, no olvidarse de donde uno viene. Tenemos una cultura muy hermosa una cultura llena de gente amable, de gente bella. Y bonito sería que al llegar acá siguiéramos teniendo ese amor por la cultura que tenemos en Colombia. No olvidarnos nunca de quiénes somos y tampoco de los objetivos que tenemos. Es importante que siempre tengan en cuenta que si vienen a este país no es para volverse como la gente de este país, sino hacer entender a la gente de este país quién realmente somos los colombianos. No somos gente que solamente vive de café, sino también de otras muchas cosas que, que nos enorgullecen. Y no somos gente que solamente está relacionada con, con el narcotráfico, sino que somos gente que sabe dar amor, que sabe dar una, una real y bonita amistad a otras personas y que siempre van a ser echadas para adelante. There you go. That's it. Great. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it and sharing your story with everybody. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for having me. We will uh, hopefully uh, maybe see some of your family in Colombia. Maybe is there anybody in the areas I'm going to? Anyone in mm. Bogota or do you have any family there? Yeah. Well, only my mom is in Bogota. The rest oh, of is. my family is um, in Cali and some other parts of the country. Maybe I should track down your mom. Mm, it's a big family. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much. Have a great new year. Happy new year. Happy new year. Everybody take care. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Conversations With is painstakingly crafted for you by the Seattle College's International Programs Department and supported by the lovely folks here on our campus. This show is produced and edited by me, Evan Frenolovich. We welcome your emails and questions about coming to Seattle Colleges. Please reach out to us via our website or just give us a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts as this helps others discover the show. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, or YouTube at Seattle Colleges INTL. That's Seattle Colleges INTL. And be sure to check out all of the shows here on Conversations With. 
Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.